RealAgriculture.com presents Farming Forward. Sharpen your soil health expertise with cover cropping, nitrogen management, and advanced grazing. Brought to you by the Farm Resilience Mentorship Program. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to Farming Forward. Today I'm in Cavan, Ontario, catching up with Norm Lamott at Woodley Farm, sir. How you doing? Nice. Nice to see you. Awesome. Hey, and thank you for the invitation. Um, today we're going to talk about best management practices, um, cover crops and how you've integrated that with, uh, with nitrogen and nitrogen management. Um, but before we get there, hey, tell us a little bit about Woodley. Uh, give us a snapshot of the operation. Yeah, Woodley Farms, founded in 1902. We're a sixth-generation family farm. I farm here uh, together with my family and my staff. We have a four-crop rotation of mm -hmm. corn, soy, wheat, and oats. And like you said, we've uh, developed a lot of best management practices in the system, and we integrate those all into our cropping systems. Yeah. Now, big focus here on nitrogen management and soil health. Now, I guess from your perspective, Norm, uh, you know, over the last decade, how has that philosophy come together? You know, how are those two applications come together? What are you trying to achieve? Yeah, I mean, from a circularity standpoint, we're trying to improve the soil while still maintaining a profit to feed the farm. And we look at all the different um, activities that we have here on the farm, and nitrogen management is one of those big activities that costs a lot of money and, and certainly has an impact on the environment as well. So we want to be sure that we're putting the right amount of nitrogen down at the right time in the right places. Yeah. Big part of that is cover crops. And tell me about, I guess, your approach to cover crops, you know, what mixes you're using, and, you know, where they fit on the farm. Yeah, we started cover cropping probably about uh, seven or eight years ago when we introduced cereals back into the rotation. So we use clovers in our cereals after our oats and our wheat, um, but we've also integrated cover crops into our corn system. We want to have that living root there as much as we can, and cover crops in the corn is just one way to achieve that. Now, I want to dig into, I guess, uh, how you seed those cover crops in corn. Tell me about that. I mean, like you've done a lot of work on nitrogen application, nitrogen efficiency, and now you're combining application of nitrogen and seeding cover crops. What are you up to? Yeah, I mean, we have small fields here in Cavan. They're rolling hills, so it's really difficult to get equipment in there in season. So when we looked at splitting our nitrogen application in corn, we said, hey, why, why don't we broadcast a cover crop in that same pass? And so what we've done is we've, we've built this machine behind us here, and that allows us to do both of those in the same pass. Hey, let's look, look at this machine here. Tell us how, uh, what we're looking at, how it runs, and how, obviously you, uh, you got some wide drops here, and you got a cover crop seeding application. Yeah, so this is a retrofit. This is an old blue jet that had coulters on it. It's 12 rows, so it matches up nicely with, with our planter width. And what we've done is we've put an EPV cover crop seeder on the front of it and, and attached some tubing so that we can broadcast those cover crops right into the crop under the canopy on each individual row at the same time that we're doing our wide drop pass for nitrogen. Talk about that combination of nitrogen. Obviously, you know, that efficiency, you know, what makes this work? Yeah, I mean, cost certainly one of them, and we don't want to trample the crop. And because of our rolling hills and the way we're set up here, we really try to minimize how many times we drive through the crop during the cropping cycle. And so this allows us to put those cover crops down, do the nitrogen pass, and then we leave it for the rest of the season. Another question about setup. Bob, talk about the power that you need to run with this machine. Yeah, like everything on the farm, we try to match the implements to the horsepower that's pulling them. So in this case here, it's 12 rows wide. We pull it with a 100 horsepower tractor. When we got this unit, it was ground driven. So we wanted to switch that to be able to do variable rate for both the nitrogen and the cover cropping. And so the fan that runs the cover crop seeder is hydraulic, but the pump that runs the Y drops is also hydraulic. So we're at max capacity on our hydraulics yeah. on the tractor. So it took a little bit of, uh, of tweaking to get to that right magic spot, but we figured it out and it works great in our system. And you mentioned, obviously, you know, this is a rig that you've customized for your operation. Talk about what you did with it. Yeah, we started off with the baseline blue jet. It had uh, a straight coulter on it. So we didn't want to have that coulter because we, we felt that it might disrupt the roots. And, and by going with the Y drop, we're placing that nitrogen right along the root base. And we find that's a much more efficient use of nitrogen and we generally try to do this right before rain so that we can get that nitrogen into the ground right to the root systems. You're doing a lot of work um, on your, your nitrogen application, right? That, that top dress and you're combining it with the cover crops. You know, how do they come together? You know, what's the strategy here? Yeah, we want to try to have that living roots year round. So by putting the cover crops down, it gives them a chance to establish and, and germinate under that canopy. And with the nitrogen pass, we, we start with the nitrate test at the beginning of the spring. So we go out, we analyze what's our 
already existing in the soil. And then we try to make an educated decision based off of that. And then we take that information and we upload it to the tractor we, through a USB. And we can do a, a variable rate prescription if we need to. Or in a year like this, when it's dry, we can cut back on those levels. So there's a cost savings there as well. Now we're looking at some drone footage here of you rolling through this crop. Um, this year, a very difficult year. Uh, dry, and we're not going to have a lot of cover crop here to look at today. We've got some pictures of past years. How effective is this machine? Yeah, for us, it, it's a perfect timing for us to make a, a valid decision on whether or not we should be putting nitrogen down and, and how much at that time. We're a little bit limited because this is a pull type applicator. Uh, we have to go in at that six to eight leaf stage, but generally we have a pretty good idea what that crop's going to look like, and we just want to get it home at that point. So we'll put half of our nitrogen up front, and then we'll come back and apply approximately 50 percent of that nitrogen again and depending on the crop and depending on the field will vary that rate across all of the uh, all the farm here. Let's talk about the cover crops and watch the mix. Uh, what's been successful for you? Yeah we generally try to include three or four different things so we'll put an oat or a rye as a cereal. We'll generally have a, a brassica so either a vetch or a crimson clover and then uh, we'll also generally put some sort of taproot system so um, we've, we've used radish quite a bit and honestly in dry years we find that peas work really well as well and they're a little bit of a nitrogen fixer as well so we create that symbiotic relationship with the plants that are growing and that seems to work for us. Now we're talking best management practices Norm and I'm gonna ask you for some best management practices and when you're talking to other to other growers you know why do you tell them about you know how to make this successful? Yeah the, the one thing that I would change on this system that we've got here is I would have a way to incorporate some of those seeds so we're just broadcasting them on the soil and that works really well in a year when we have lots of moisture and like this year it's 2025 we've had probably one of the driest years in 10 years we just really didn't see much germination of those cover crop seeds as they're just sitting on the surface. Yeah, so you want to add some, some cultivation, shall we say, some way to get some seed to soil contact on that seed. Yeah, we've talked about maybe putting sort of a, a little rolling basket behind these Y drops or maybe even some change just to move that soil just a touch to get some of those seeds in contact with one another. And like I said, the peas work really well. Bizarre, they're, they're a large seed, they sit on the surface, but they absorb moisture and they tend to, uh, to send a root down quite easily. Now, talk about what happens when this works well. Obviously, we're having a tough year this year, but you know, what does this look like in the spring? Um, what type of credit are you getting? You know, what does this do for your for your soil health and your strategy? Yeah, I mean, we're really focused on soil health, so having those living roots there year-round is really key to us. So a few of those cover crops will overwinter, and so when we go into the spring, we'll have maybe those rye will still be around. The brassicas uh, tend to hang around over the winter as well. The oats will generally die off, but having that root structure there, you know, it just it helps absorb some of that moisture in the spring as well, and allows us to plant that next crop. Final question, Norm, and that is, you know, getting into a system like this, you know, I'm, I know you talk to a lot of farmers. What do you tell them about getting into cover crops and specifically broadcasting, doing some top, top dress with seeding? Yeah, anytime you're thinking about getting into cover cropping, I always suggest that you reach out to a friend or a neighbor that might have some equipment that you can try. Maybe do a few acres, see if it works in your system, and then make that investment. I wouldn't go out and build a unit like this just to try it. Um, it's always important to try a few acres on your farm first. Awesome, yes. Uh, there's no mistakes in agriculture, as someone I know says, only test spots, right? That's right. Good stuff. Yes. Norm, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Great to have you on Farming Forward. Pleasure to be here, and thanks for coming out. If you enjoyed this video and want to continue to sharpen your soil health expertise, I encourage you to go to farmlearninghub.ca to learn more.